Welcome back to the Black Parade Mission 6, kept away from you. Just arrived in the guest quarters they prepared for me so kindly. Well, given all these statues, maybe they're watching me here. Which... Hmm. You would kind of think that knowing anyone, knowing that uh, the keepers can <sighs> and watch through statues would refuse to have any in their chambers. But maybe you don't get much choice. So I've got a medallion. Letter to the translator. Most esteemed translator, I am again so very honoured and humbled to receive your illustrious person within the wall halls of First Keeper's Watch. You already know it, but I grant you free access to all the books we possess in our archives including the rare and potentially dangerous volumes found within the Restricted Library. I will provide a ring key to the Restricted Library when we meet in my office, which is found at the top of the Central Library. A fellow keeper shall be posted at the entrance should you need assistance in your quest. Yours in knowledge, Superior Elder Nathaniel of First Keeper's Watch. Ah, all this. Alright, there we go. So if we go to the top of the central library, so it's a ring key for restricted library in office at top of central library. Okay. Of course it's guarded, but that's fine. So we're here. That was very valuable information to find in the in the guest chambers. So we've explored all this. I guess we'll check out these two ante rooms, which are probably also the more small sleeping chambers, right? Uh, and then head to the central library seems like a good place to go. Unless I wanted to check out the council tower. No, not yet. We'll come, we'll come back to that. Getting keys to new places seems, you know, like a pretty valuable kind of thing to do. The sort of thing I should be pursuing. So this is southwest. Right, so south is just the council tower. There's nothing out. Out this side for me, except. Hello? Where's that wood? Tell whether that was uh, wood grain I was seeing. <sighs> this is another secluded overlook. Where are we? She's not on the map. Is it? Needs a key. Hmm. Unless this is the office at the top of the central library. Because there would be there would be a room up these doors, right? Maybe I just stumbled upon the place I was trying to get to. A sheer luck. Is this Garrett again? We do not know who breached our compound yet, but stay alert and ever vigilant. Truly, the unwritten times are upon us. They're on to me. Superior Elder's key. Superior Elder Nathaniel, be advised that Translator Gamal is set to arrive in First Keeper's Watch in two days. Her mission is of the utmost importance. A new prophecy requires her to search your archives for a few scriptures and terms. Assist her as much and as thoroughly as you can. Signed, First Keeper Xavier. Let's just note. 
Elder Nathaniel. It is with the deepest regret that I must bring you this news. Twice now I have missed a report from Acolyte Jeremiah, our agent in Sutheim Heights. I was thus forced to contact him personally. Arriving at the store, I found the portcullis sealed shut, so I had to compromise myself and enter through the nearby smithy. Inside, the secret entrance was completely exposed and the empty shop smelled worse than rotten fish. Down below, my worries were confirmed. Acolyte Jeremiah was hanging from the ceiling. He tried to tell us that this assignment was a burden too hard to bear. My condolences, and best of luck on finding a replacement agent. Hume's arms seem almost longer than uh, Garrett's. Very old Nathaniel is not at home. I know who you are, why you are here, and what you are looking for. Our ancient organization has three goals. To observe from afar, to store knowledge, and to preserve the balance. The statuette you touched has made you sensitive to subtle magic, able to see our glyphs and ourselves. The gem around your neck is imbued with such magic. It belonged to one of us. I bear no grudge for this old theft. But I demand you keep our existence an absolute secret. A few of us are aware of the prophecy about you. To keep things simple, Interpreter Kadaka can read the future through glyphs, and Translator Gamal delivers her prophecies to us. Through them, I knew you would come, and I knew you would read these words. We possess a tome that will clarify your predicament. Young acolytes can be nosy or succumb to temptation, and so this profane text is sequestered in our restricted library. The ring key provided with this missive will allow you to access it. The book is entitled As Around the Cruel, Necromancy, The Black Parade, and Its Schism from the Hand Brotherhood. Take it and read it carefully, as I will come to retrieve it in a few days. I trust the book will contain all the information you need. There is another item you require, a harp inlaid with amethysts, the one you were supposed to steal from Hawtrey Manor as a matter of fact. It was recovered by our agents decades ago and is now concealed in our reliquary at the top of the North Tower for study. Your former master did not know where it was, nor does he understand its true purpose. This too is explained by the book. While I know the outcome of your ordeal, I am afraid I cannot divulge the way it ends. All we can do now is wait and observe. This guy's giving the creeps. That rings the best chance I have. Now to get into the restricted library. Okay. Well, that was pretty lucky that I uh, stumbled into this place when I was uh, looking to get a long way around to get here. But, that leaves me a question. If, they, if he knows I'm here, then... Uh, Why not just let me wander? Or why not redirect me away from this place so I don't learn too much? So that I don't learn too much and um, then deliver me the book, right? You know? Seems very strange to knowingly let me I'm in here and uh who is that? Show yourself. Hey, must be a glyph playing tricks on me. It's way too bright here. I wonder what the interpretation Well I avoided detection the the hard way, the very hard way. I discovered another glyph door by luck. So I suppose. <sighs> Where are we? We're at the eastern end of the library, southeastern end. I guess we can just say X, right? It's not. It's a glyph door. It's not, uh. On the ladder, please. Oh, it isn't event two. Okay, I suppose. Just 
it's going to come like this is good, right? So it's just like this ladder has been set up properly so you can walk off the top and this angled bit here is so that you can step off instead of necessarily having to crouch mantle. Hello, where are we coming here? So we came from here. And we went up. Are we in here? No, surely not. Oh no, yes we are. Judging by the look of the shape of the room. I guess the other way goes into the scriptorium. So why would he be happy with me stealing all the stuff from him? Who's this in the shadows? I mean, it's only trinkets, right? These ancient halls are getting to me. I must concentrate. Nice cloak, dude. Sometimes I swear they keep it cold in here so we don't fall asleep. I guess that's why he's wearing the cloak, because it's cold. Okay, so this is back to the upper level of the central library. So I can keep exploring the central library again. A little more, uh... With a little less collapsing this time, hopefully. A little less falling to my death this time. Sometimes I swear they keep it cold in here so we don't fall asleep. I'll leave that door open. Can I? No, does he's not respond to what arrows. That's annoying. Alright, let's undo that. Oh wow, this is a slow load. Nothing? Nothing? You heard nothing? You saw nothing? I wanted to go this way, right? Check if this. No, he's, he's coming this way. Let's. I wonder what the interpreter meant by this. Let's perhaps stay out of the way. I wonder to see if there's any, maybe any more. Mm. Cobwebs, darkness, and incompetence. Another book gone. It's the eighth this month. What is going on? Was this is very today. troubling indeed. Which one is it this time? Collected observations on the Hand Brotherhood, volume 16. And the Master Archivist Registry states it hasn't been borrowed for many years. <laughs> but it's gone. Vanished. Hmm. Yet another book on the Hand Brotherhood disappearing. This cannot be a coincidence. Something is amiss. I've also heard reports about disappearing books in our stone market compound. This must be submitted for an investigation now. Don't fret, Acolyte. I shall talk to the Elder about that as soon as possible. We must protect our knowledge, after all. What Those the... old books look that book so doesn't weird. Belong here. Like they're made of human flesh? My god! Sometimes I swear they keep he did walk right into me. These old books look so weird. I didn't notice a damn thing. Like but they're made of human flesh. I'm gonna do that. 
Uh, okay, the Blue Flame Tower. The eldest officers in the... What is up with the Blue Flame Tower? Observations on the City Wardens, NO820. The year 820 was particularly bloody, and the power balance between the crime overlords of the city was at its most fragile. De Wall was already well established in North Quarter and Shalebridge, but his sudden takeover of Newmarket in Pampinosis led to an all-out street war with Sterling, Warden of Newmarket downtown on South Quarter at the time. The Baron's police and the Order of the Hammer were powerless before such uninhibited gang violence. Indeed, it was not a rare sight to witness mobs of thugs and rogues fight each other to the death in marketplaces or alleyways. Sterling had secured an alliance with Ramirez, Warden of Hightown, a few years back, but the latter had already betrayed him by Fervidor, sensing a turn of the tide, and had been supplying reinforcements and equipment to DeWall in secret. This conflict lasted until Beneficus, when DeWall had definitively took over Sterling's territory, had him executed, and gave South Quarter and Downtown to Ramirez, establishing him as the second most powerful warden after DeWall. Another less bloody but equally important conflict happened in Recidivus, between Lord Mayor Hegemon Broderick and the short-lived Waden, Warden of Stone Market and Lower Locks at the time. The young but ill-tempered crime lord had been warden for only four months, having assassinated the previous warden, Leonid Broderick, brother to the Lord Mayor, in his sleep. Wildly unpopular among his men and subordinates for such a treacherous act, they quickly secured a secret alliance with the Lord Mayor, who was not particularly versed in crime, but still had ties with other wardens, thanks to his late brother, and had Waden gruesomely assassinated in broad daylight. Some say a beast slew him, but a more plausible explanation is a group of thugs brutally murdered him. In any case, reports indicate that the Barrett's police did not intervene during this event, and the Hammerites were reportedly strangely absent. Broderick's reign, however, turned out to be as equally short-lived as Waden's. The wealthy, ambitious, and strategic Webster bought off Broderick's men and took over his entire territory by the end of the year without any bloodshed. Webster... Don't come this way, man. Good. But also you. Also good. Thanks, guys. <coughs> kind of you to uh, be so indulging. Not readable. Uh, cut myself again with the edges. This is why you should wear gloves, silly. There is that book again. So this blue flame tower, the north side is there. I what is it? What? I guess it's just the entrance. Let's go downstairs. Let's, let's check out what's at the bottom of Blue Flame Tower. So this mission is giving me a lot of vibes of another FM that was set in a keeper zone. Uh, I can't remember the name of it. Not, um... And I think it may have had a Blue Flame Tower as well, right? Rings a bell. The blue flame requires no fuel, yet burns without ceasing. Okay. And that's just where I came in. Alright. Nothing else I need. Can't remember the name of it at all. But, um... It just looks like this. Put out this torch, I might as well take this route. Of course, that clip was right. Who thought it was a good idea to merge the Carathon antiquity section with the modern Piganic one? I mean, who's this in the shadows? God, these lights are just so sudden. And Must be a glyph playing I tricks. Do on not like, I do not like this lighting. Lights are not. I must concentrate. What is coming behind you? Sometimes I swear they keep it cold in here so we don't fall asleep. It's good from, it goes from nothing to suddenly you're super illuminated. You can't see the boundary properly.
didn't hear my clattering, is that, did he? Seems okay. Arthur, please prepare the vacant guest room to receive translator Kamal. She is not to be disturbed under any circumstances when she is in her quarters. Make sure the nearby hall is dead silent as well. I do not wish to provoke the first keeper's ire. Nathaniel. On the matter of Lady de Yarworth's letters, a thesis by Keeper Leopold. In 708, however, Cuthill Printing Company published what they claimed were letters of the very secretive Lady Eustatia de Yarworth. Lady de Yarworth was well known for suffering from the falling sickness, hence her seclusion within her manor. However, the letters recorded an entirely different person. During the Black Fog of 687, when she was still a young girl, Lady de Yarworth was inducted into the Mysteries of the Honeymaker Beast, a paganic cult created by her ancestress. The letters continued with her growing role as a member of this cult, until she was in command of a vast network of witch co witches' covens all over the city. Naturally, the publishing of these letters was not seen as a positive thing. The Hammerite clergy did denounce them. Oh my god, I'm having so much reading! The Hammerite clergy denounced them as blasphemous. Lady de Yarworth herself refuted them, and the company who published them issued a retraction. The letters were dismissed as a foul calumny. The public was all too eager to believe the story of the letters were but a gross vilification designed to ruin the crippled lady's name. Was. The story was but a gross vilification designed to ruin the crippled lady's name. Certainly the shame was enough to make many members of her family abandon her, journeying to Roxburgh to leave their past behind. Lady de Yarworth herself remained confined to her manor until her death two decades later. In truth, the letters were completely genuine. Lady de Yarworth's illness came not from consanguinity, but from taking strong hallucinogenic mushrooms, and many of the rituals described within were authentic, ignoble religious ceremonies which are too dangerous to describe, in addition, in addition to having been contaminated with materials providing a rudimentary hint about our existence. Fortunately, few records of the letters remain. The Guildsman's riots of 709 and the Great Book Burnings of 716 that followed resulted in many copies being destroyed, and the Castle Printing Company only had a single copy left when Keeper Gale managed to secure it from their guildhouse at Duskmoor. By now, Keeper Severus estimated that only three copies are known to remain, but they pose no threat as they are now locked in private libraries owned by reclusive lords. Too much reading, uh, my throat is getting. Uh, is suffering for it. Hmm. I wonder what the interpreter meant by this. Maybe I should have had a cup of tea instead of a cup of coffee. Come on, give me the candle. Thank you. Alright, map time. We want to go to the restricted library, so we just go straight out the store and turn left. Agitated manner, and it's just opens this door and turns around and goes straight back out again. Sometimes, yeah. Ah, uh, I'm a laggard. You know what? I'm gonna throw a moss here. There's carpet, but moss means I can just run across. Fortunately, I have to wait for the guy inside to come out because I don't know what he's doing. What the? I guess yeah, I can drink some water to soothe my throat. Maybe the guy inside doesn't understand. come out very often. No, they don't understand. The unwritten times are coming. Flattering footsteps. Such a relief. Is anybody in the restricted library? 
I mean, it's restricted, right? Surely nobody. I guess I can hear footsteps on wood if they're actually coming up here. Oh, I'm just hearing the guy going back and forth down there. Allowed beyond this point. Okay, well, good news. Statues are all facing away, so they're not watching me, right? They're watching black voids. Oh my god, we're looking for... That's some agitated footsteps. Don't like the sound of that. Here on escape route. Or maybe it's nothing to do with me. How are we going to find the book in all this? I'm not even sorted. How do we keep us keep track of this? Okay, he's up there. What's that? Is that translated to come on? On the choice of the Dark Watch site. Dark Watch Sanctuary was founded in 722 in the then industrial district, with the purpose of breaking the secret of the impassable gates in the South Grotto. Speculations abound with regards to what is found beyond these mysterious gates, as a strong magic presence can be felt. But in a hundred years, none has been able to break the seals. It is theorized by Superior Elder Silvus, currently the head of Dark Watch, that a powerful artifact is needed to unseal the doors. This artifact is rumored to be the fabled Zilich amulet, of which parts have been scattered to the four winds and have eluded our order for centuries. The location of Dark Watch Sanctuary is also strategically advantageous, as the now old industrial district is close to Merkmill, High Watch, and Lampfire Hills. This has allowed our order to observe with great attention the power struggles on the northeast bank and to intervene should the balance be broken. The Hammerites of St. Trinet, for instance, have started to quarrel with the Hammer Hill seat and may try a coup. We must be vigilant if this happens. Keep eventual. Yeah, see, that one's bound in human flesh. Or, I guess that's a human face there. I mean, maybe it's buried flesh. <laughs> a small bark. That is. Translated come all. How would Hume know that? Hume, Hume can't be expected to know such things. He just thinks it's weird that there's a little kid wandering around. It's like it's... Bring your daughter to work day in the Keeper Sanctuary. And, and her dad is just let her run around the restricted library because... She can't read, so she won't get into any trouble. And nobody's going to bother her here because they're not allowed in here. It makes perfect sense. Codex of Keepers who strayed from our purpose. Any brethren listed here should be bound and captured at all costs for the danger they represent. Interpreter Yant, misreading a prophecy without any attempt at correction, responsible for disastrous consequences. Keeper Rinnewild, revealing, has told up to ten individuals about the existence of our organization in a tavern. Elder Eldarius, abuse of glyphs, has subjugated an innocent's mind for two years. Scribe Tarxax, dark magic, used the study of the glyphs for destructive purposes. Keeper Elysium, murder killed Elder, Elder Lopus and tried to burn the evidence. Keeper Olstein, betrayal, has stolen several important tomes and fled to Roxburgh. 
Would he be a spy from the mysterious order? Elder Dan. Abuse of glyphs. Illegal use of the glyph of youth for sentimental reasons. Scribe Vanson. Misappropriation. Stolen a dozen dangerous tomes without authorization for personal interest. Keeper Ketius. Betrayal. Attempted assassination of Third Keeper Orland. Keeper Jonas. Revealing. Sent secret messages to the wrong address for five years. Denies his mistake. Keeper Mercedes. Misappropriation. Used keeper training for personal interests such as thievery, blackmail, and other crimes. Well, uh, Keeper Garrett used keeper training for personal interests such as thievery and other crimes, and maybe blackmail. And is not listed to be found and captured at all costs. So that's odd, would you not say? She's up there, she's not going to be coming down here. So I can go up these steps in relative safety right now. I keep, keep using these books hoping they'll be valuable and I can steal them, and no, they're just more reading. A compendium of sentients. Herein you shall find a list of the known sentients. They are classified in two different categories. Sentients and lesser sentients. Sentients, also known as artifacts, soul stones, or relics, a grouping of five objects possessing special powers and what is thought to be a consciousness normally only associated with living entities, presumably created as part of an ancient safeguard against the forces of evil. Examples include the heart and the chalice, also called the builder's cup by the Hammerites. Efforts to confine all sentients to one place for study have failed. How and when they came into existence is not known. Recommend further study. Five sentients are known to be located in and around the city. They are the aforementioned heart, currently exhibited in the Wheelstrom Museum, the aforementioned chalice, currently kept by the Hamrites in St. Edgar's Cathedral, the eye, currently sealed within the Old Quarter Cathedral, the jackal's paw, currently in the possession of the dreads of Witchwood, Gruliac's crown, whereabouts unknown but thought to be located close to Carathin. It should be noted that these are likely not the only sentients, or higher sentients as they should be described more accurately, in existence. Several other sentients have been theorized to exist according to various texts, both from our time and before, and in many different cultures. Lesser sentients. These sentients also possess a consciousness, but are not as potent as the ones described in the previous passage. Unlike the other sentients, these are more than often the result of magical creation, and were built with a specific purpose, ranging from the mundane to the destructive. Examples include, but are not limited to, the medallion of true seeing, whereabouts unknown, Esteridge's chimes, currently in the possession of Lady Seibel, Karastrag, whereabouts unknown. Note, this item being a sentient is doubtful at best. Hulich's mask, currently kept in First Keeper's Watch. Is she coming down this way? Walk so fast and the footsteps reverberate so much, it's hard to know. Oh, the point. If I go up the stairs, I don't know where I'm going to, where my shadows are going to be. The answer is here. My shadows are here. Oh, of course, in the restricted library they have all the decorative statues because you can't have a nice fancy keeper place without decorative statues. But they turn them all to face the walls. So they won't be spying on the people in the library because it's a library for important people. And important people should not be spied upon, right? At least that's my interpretation. Nothing here. Okay, so the rope I just threw up uh, should be in one of these pillars here. Is she on the upper floor? Okay, I thought it was on this floor. 
If she's on the upper floor, she'll be coming down the staircase to the right. Which is a problem for me, because I can't... She's not being next to it. Yep, here she comes. In the air. This place is so dusty. They really need to clean. There's my red arrow. Let's put that away. I guess I'm going to need to get to the upper floors, right? Casually toss all these books on the floor. The Fidgwitz's Hollow Temporary Catastrophe. Recent reports indicate that after a thorough examination of the written documents of that time by Elder Hannes and Elder Petrus, the catastrophe which flooded and buried our sanctuary in Fidgwick's Hollow in 723 was, in fact, correctly prophesied by Interpreter Ianth. It appears translator Eudora made a mistake in her translation during Interpreter Ianth's last prophecy, stating that the tremors were, in fact, not a danger when they absolutely were. Notes found in a concealed alcove in her quarter a few years ago, in which translator Eudora admitted her mistake, permitted Elder Hannes and Elder Petros to shed some light on this incident. This revealed mistake is more than serious, as it puts into question translator Eudora's other translations and capacities as a translator. Was this her only mistake, or did she commit more during her time? Moreover, interpreter Ayanth's name was slandered. She was removed from her position and unjustly tried with no means of defense after the sanctuary was suddenly lost to the cave-ins and subsequently flooded. The two elders believe that, with this new information, First Keeper Xavier should hold a pardon ceremony and clear interpreter Yanthi's good name. Oh yeah, so it's be just. Can I could rope up? I don't have to go up the stairs, I suppose. But I mean, the stairs seem fine to me. I think she's coming. Hang back here in the carpet and wait. But the chance of making a horrific clatter when trying to throw a rope up there is honestly seems a lot higher than the chance of making making such a noise while going up these lovely steps. Have been walking on the balustrade again, but again, the mantling onto it would be awkward. Where's that blood here? It's a weird looking book. As around the cruel necromancy, the Black Parade, and its schism from the Hand Brotherhood. The origins of the Hand Brotherhood are mysterious to say the least. They are considered a case outside any jurisdiction in their place of origin in the Far East. They travel the world, establishing sanctums to study various magical phenomena. Two such sanctums are in the heartland, a complex of towers beyond the city known as the Mage Keep, and another sanctum within the city inside the old High Watch Castle. An Archmage of Yore, Dubidge, chose to be interred here. We believe his choice was not at random, and the arrival of Hand Renegade Azaran the Cruel in the city all but confirms this. Azaran, an infamous and ancient mage, is an avid practitioner of necromancy. For this, he was exiled from his homeland in the Far East and branded a heretic by the Hand Brotherhood. Due to both his interest in necromancy and his desire for revenge against his homeland, Azaran gained a following that coalesced into a rogue mage enclave, the Black Parade. The Hand Brotherhood anathematized this group, circa 827. Why did Azaran seek out the heartland and the city? With the acquisition of a rare extract taken from the lost anti-necromantic mage polemic Abubtiyar's tablets, we have a reasonable answer. 
Most of the obscure incantations and odd imagery in our extract is meaningless without the whole text. However, one subject of great concern recurs throughout. There exists a physical source of some awful magic with the power to capture the souls of those who touch it. This sentient object, unnamed and undescribed, out of fear, was alleged at the time the tablets were carved to be in the heartland. If this remains true today, it explains Azaran's choice to settle the Black Parade in the city. Such a vessel of souls would provide ample fuel for any necromantic rituals. Fortunately, even our limited extract contains the central purpose of Abuptiar's tablets. To archive the method that the Hand Brotherhood devised to annul necromancy, and to travel to the realm where these captured souls reside. The extract speaks of three artifacts that the Hand Brotherhood has enchanted for this purpose. They are as follows. A rectangular ruby, initially sealed in a casket by Archmage Kurak, later retrieved by Tomb Raider Circus 702. After some time in illegal trade, it was acquired by Messer Gustavio Aldrius and earned the title Aldrius' Demise after he ingested the gem in a fatal effort to conceal it. It resides in his family tomb within the catacomb complex beneath Stone Market. Hmm, where have I come across this gem before? I don't know. It rings a vague bell, doesn't it? These artifacts are to annul necromancy and travel to the realm where the captured souls reside. Huh. A signet ring with a sapphire stone in the care of Archmage Tadir, locked away in a large mage mortuary in Hagkill Forest. From the two unsuccessful expeditions we have sent there to recover Abuptiar's tablets, we know that the Amethyst Harp was crafted as part of a trial for Hand Acolytes to access Tadir's tomb using magical silk strings from a source inside the complex, and have high confidence that the tablets are buried within. Amethyst Harp, you say? Hmm. A gold amulet worn by Archmage Dubage, resting with him in his sepulchre at Highwatch Castle. We have failed to learn the purpose of this relic, and it may even be purely ceremonial. Many questions remain. Can this sentient vessel be destroyed? If so, would this trap the souls within forever? Did the Hand Brotherhood devise their method to enter this realm of souls in the hope of rescuing them? Has such an endeavor been attempted before? Without the original tablets, we cannot begin to guess. We are unsure whether the tablets even hold this information. In secret, we have investigated the archives of the Hand Brotherhood for answers, or a complete copy of the tablets, but we have found no trace of them. Necromancy has been a forbidden dark art for so long among the Hand Brotherhood, there is a chance that knowledge of this necromancy safeguard has been lost among their members, leaving them with no way of dealing with Azaran and the Black Parade should they ever locate and use the sentient vessel of souls. So, the Hand Brotherhood wants to destroy these necromancers. I know that bastard Dewal has Aldreus demise, and the Brotherhood already has the amulet. If I get that ring, too, they'd have everything they need to stop Azaran. And if they succeed, would that remove this curse? What curse? What curse are you talking about? The brand that lets you see Keeper Glyphs? I don't know, she's coming. Oh lord, she coming. Well, there's a book I needed to find. We've got a bunch of loot to steal. Okay, and then return to my rented apartment when I'm done. Got a lot of keeper territory to cover still, I guess. Maybe she's not coming? was up on this floor, right? Yes, yes, yes. Okay. So I guess I want to check out the rest of this restricted library and then make my way down. I do like how the floors, the, the cut out on each floor is in the shape of a keel and they're not one above the another. They're staggered. It's very, it's very cool. It makes it so much, so much Cooler than just the straight old octagonal towers. Uh, I like it. Oh, this is this is quiet on the edge. Is this the interpreter's tower? Right. No, no, maybe. maybe. Are we powerless against the coming unwritten times? By Elder Drake. An age of confusion and uncertainty. 
These are the words chosen by interpreters when prophecies concern the unwritten times, and many other keepers who fear this period said to occur after the Third Dark Age. But is there nothing we can do to stop it? The first thing to keep in mind is how our order gathers information about the future, by reading books from the ancient times or watching for signs from the glyphs with the help of interpreters. Since the unwritten times have to do with the lack of compass for the future, we could suppose it being either the destruction of our libraries or the death of all interpreters. Some also suspect the disappearance of all glyphs or even the end of the world, but all these outcomes feel like more like the result of a dark age. This raises a question, are the unwritten times a consequence of the third dark age or a means to prevent it? An answer would certainly be found by understanding the Brethren and Betrayer prophecy. However, no matter the origin of the unwritten times, the interpreters are unequivocal. The Order has to prepare for it and protect its knowledge by copying down the most important terms and by placing more focus on retrieving lost prophecies before the unwritten times come. Otherwise, these events could upset the balance kept for centuries and mean an end of the Keeper organization. She's not coming back up here. This statue is watching. As is that one. They're not facing the wall. The place just keeps going up. And there's no, not the interpreter tower, right? Because the interpreter's tower is. Uh, hello. Someone's burning books? The Brethren and Betrayer Prophecy. Of all the prophecies our Order has known, two are most worrisome. The Unwritten Times and the Brethren and Betrayer. It seems the two are linked. The Unwritten Times seems to be the Third Dark Age and would most likely have far greater ramifications than both the Dark Project and the Metal Age. Not only is the outcome unknown to us, but we cannot tell exactly when this would occur. This book, however, will concentrate on the Brethren and Betrayer Prophecy. Very little is known about this prophecy yet, as the glyphs have not revealed much. Interpreter Kataka does not receive much in the way of knowledge as far as it is concerned, but what we know so far could potentially help us understand what we are facing and take action in due time. The glyphs seem to indicate that the Brethren and Betrayer would play a major role in the coming of the Unwritten Times. The Brethren and Betrayer would be someone among our ranks who would enshroud themselves in absolute secrecy and cunning subterfuge, thus making it harder for us to detect them. The Brethren and Betrayer would use scheming and conspiracy to, to divide us. Note, while I appreciate this isn't much to work with, I do believe these pieces of information will come in useful later. More research needs to be done. Elder Sebastian. Well, that sounds like a book they shouldn't be burning. Wouldn't you agree? Translated them all. Is this a door? It feels like a door. It goes clunk like a door. It's not ah, it doesn't have a door glyph. But it does have a secret. There we go. There's a, there's a door glyph on this side. A secret entrance to the to the restricted library? That seems extremely <sighs> hazardous, does it not? That means people can come and go from the restricted library without being <sighs> noticed? Oh dear. I have... I shouldn't be going this way. I have so much more to, looting to do in the Keeper compound. <sighs> and this ends in a blank wall. No, that's got to be a secret door as well, will be a... Or maybe not. No, this is just caves. <sighs> This is bad. I need to go back, but I also need to see what this goes. I'm going to do this silly video game thing of going forward a bunch and then going back a bunch. Oh my god. Why is this rope so hard to grab? Why am I not able to grab? Why am I not able to grab that rope? Let's have some carrots. Maybe they'll help. Or bread. 
go from one carrot to No, carrots are no good. Well, that's all my food. Right, grab the first rope. No problem. Grab the second rope. There we go. That was unnecessarily uh, difficult. <sighs> Flowers on the ceiling. This is a strange place. Some garden shed. That sounds like a guard. And this sounds looks like a fairly normal kind of place. It's several of flowers on the ground. Running water, this canals. Where are we? Looking east. Over the industrial district. <clears throat> Shit, what's going up here? Hello? Show yourself. Nothing here now. Uh, map of the town, please. I guess we're up here? We're up... Maybe up here. That might be Dimmer Band Manor we're seeing. Well, that's clearly meant as... Oh, you've gone all this way to the restricted library. We'll give you a quick exit so you can go back to, you know... Your apartment and finish the mission um, rather than you know retrace all your steps everywhere all the time but that's not actually helpful for me because I wanted to I haven't been to the scriptorium and stuff in this, this bunch of places and the keeper library haven't been so you have to go all the way through the restricted library again when I come back to make use of this exit. And it's all very inconvenient. And it's really all because you gave me such an enormous loot goal. Because if I didn't have the ridiculous loot goal, I would probably just say, fuck it, I will. I'll just go. Ah! Dang it, I didn't mean to. Didn't mean to miss that. I'm getting a really strange vibe from that little girl. Better not mess with her. <laughs> well. Uh oh. Hey. Shouldn't have done that. I had to try. I had to try. Uh, that's cool. Nice, nice detail there. Ah! God, why am I? I'm not able to move quite fast enough to grab the rope avoiding the ground, but of course uh, jumping would be take me too far. Rather inconvenient. Okay, jumping from here is fine. Oh, 
just up, I went up, I just went down. Here we go. Okay. So, uh, let's keep exploring in here a little bit longer, because uh, we haven't been to any of the section. Entrustment Tower. We haven't been in here either, the eldest offices. Uh, yeah, we've got all this to do. So, I guess we're pretty close, right? We can come out here, head to these rooms, check out these rooms, then come back through the passage here to the scriptorium and scout the stuff for any, anything we missed. So we want to go west. Can't find anything in here. I think we've got to go down the floor first. Damn, someone heard that? Cowardice is unbecoming of a keeper. Reveal yourself. Hmm. That was nothing. As always. He thought there was another keeper. Okay, that's a good line. So the thing I was saying earlier about... <laughs> about, um... Uh, what was it? It'd be nice if they had lines that were not about intruders. That line was not about an intruder. It was about a keeper. Cowardice is unbecoming of a keeper. Reveal yourself. God, people like the god rays, don't they? Believe. We want to go west from here. No. Yes. Right. Uh, that's this passageway I'm walking out of. No, this passageway I'm walking out of. Okay. Where is that book again? Oh, yeah, we've got this. Can't find anything in here. This guy that wanders back and forth the whole way frenetically. Have I actually searched? Yeah, that's just a library down there. And I went to the Blue Flame Tower. I don't need any of that. Ah, I'm a lackwit. Of course that glyph was right. Elder, is that you? Uh, who's over there? No one. It was surely an acolyte. Nervous after meeting an elder like me. <laughs> That's one hell of a line. Well, that was surely a convoluted explanation. I thought I heard something. These are separate separate places. I'm hearing footsteps down here. Though. Are they coming this way? Yes. This is what your life has come to. You should be ashamed. Will you stop making noise? Okay. Fine. That's it. No, no big deal. <sighs> the elders, uh, hot tub. What's this guy in the hot tub room? 
He was. I cannot believe the incontinence of this player. In the dining room. Valuable silverware. Plus they keep the good stuff for themselves, right? No different to any other. Hmm, tasty grapes too. Cameras. If you get around this way, there's a good chance you might bump into me, which would have been awkward. I do see what looks like a fire crystal in that uh, flame there. Indeed, it was. Alright. One more setting to rob. There we go. There we go. Oh, they've got candlesticks. Valuable candlestick, it looks like it might be. Alright, 1374, we're getting there. Oh, that's the exit passageway, that's where I need to go next. And then there's the North Tower, which I kind of looked around. Did I loot it? Do I want to do a quick run around of it? Maybe I do. Not sure. I'll get a quick, very, very quick look, see if there's anything obvious I missed. Not noisy, that's a good thing. What Lies Beyond the Great Ice Wastes by William Weckering, Esquire. Printed by the most worshipful company of the new market printers, NO790, the city. North of the dreaded area known as the furthest north lies the place known as the even further north. The Great Ice Wastes, also called Shadowlands or more pompously, the not yet known land of the north. These lands are an endless desert of nothingness, snow and freezing blizzards, where no agriculture is possible, as the soil is hard as iron and the icy cold wind is akin to daggers of frost. Several expeditions were made in ancient days with the noble purpose of mapping the expanse, but these lands are so hard to navigate in and the environment so harsh that the few explorers who returned left us with rough tales of what they could only guess lied beyond, lay beyond. The cartographers of yore did not give this area a name, they only referred to it using the phrase Hic sunt monstruosus bestia. That is, hic sunt monstruosus bestia. Why do you repeat it? Here be monstrous beasts, which could probably be true, considering the numerous fantastical tales of woolly oliphants or giant sea serpents described by seafarers. One such story struck me with primal fear, which I will narrate in detail much later in these pages. However, the humble author of this book urges readers not to simply reject this story as a simple sailor superstition, or a rambling madman's tale, as I have good reasons to believe the man was telling the truth with his bone-chilling report of frozen cyclopean cities, grotesque monoliths, and nameless monstrosities that dwell in hidden crevices. Uh-huh. Lovecraft. Even if the tale narrated by the author of this book is nothing but a fraction of the immemorial origins of the Great Ice Waste, an order issued by the High Council was to burn a few pages of the book for the sake of sanity. These few words must suffice. Give a moral. Uh, I don't know. You want to put Lovecraft references in tonight? I mean, I guess it's not. I guess there was a Cthulhu statue. It's not like it's a unique nonsense perpetrated by. Uh... Right, we've we've been up there, right? Did I go? The entrustment tower. Yeah, we went down that way. That took us to the dormitory. How come there's candles I didn't put out? It's wild. And the stairs east. But this one leading to I have not been in the Hall of Glass. And I've not been in this little alcove. Wow, this alcove's done. 
Let's check out the whole glass. There's a super loud ambient again all of a sudden. All of glass has goes east of the central library. Okay, we'll we'll head out east. We've been in the south tower, we'll just check out the west and south and east corners of this. Nothing. Nothing. All right, we can go through the library again. So where do we want to go through the library? I just want to go out east, or I can get into the. Yeah, I just want to cut across here. Sometimes I swear. Office of the Master Librarian. Right, that's what this room is. Okay. Well, we have the Scriptorium. And they're about to explore. We can see the Keeper's hard at work down there. Makes a pretty good screenshot, too. And uh, this is where I'm going to leave the episode. When we come back, we'll rob the last of this keeper facility, make our way back, all the way back up the, to the restricted library and take the exit there, and rob the rest of the town, I suppose. So uh, thanks for watching, and see you soon.